Once my aunt came from Ottawa to visit my parents and I. We were all spending lots of time together and we decided to take her to Waterton, Alberta. After a while, we wanted to go visit Red Rock Canyon. The name is pretty self-explanatory. It's a small canyon made up of red rocks. There was something wrong with our car, so my parents stayed behind and told my aunt and I to go ahead. My parents decided to walk on the hiking trail outside the canyon once they came, while my aunt and I went down to stroll through the canyon with the rest of the tourists. At the bottom of the canyon, there's a mountain stream. The water generally gets no deeper than waist length on the average person, although it does get deeper in some areas. My aunt, being used to cold water, was moving through the canyon quickly, while I was dying inside because of how painfully cold the water was. As we walked further into the canyon, we arrived at a shallow area where the water reached to about ankle length. The ground underneath the water was made of a red rock the canyon was so famous for. However, that red rock, when combined with water, tends to grow an awful lot of algae, making it extremely slippery. I walked out onto the rock, then slipped. I was unharmed, although it took me a moment to process that the entire front of my body, except my face, was now wet. I suddenly found that the water wasn't so cold anymore. The two men who were nearby checked to see if I was okay and came over to help me up, but I brushed them off and stood up with a little help from my aunt. We then continued our journey through the canyon. We went very far into the canyon until we were thoroughly soaked and cold to the bone. My aunt attempted to collect rocks and I was telling her to forget about the rocks and focus on balancing. We both slipped several times and every time we'd start laughing. We passed by a lot of people in the canyon, but eventually we came to an area that was basically deserted. My aunt was tired and wanted to head back, so I reluctantly withdrew and we walked back. On our way back, my aunt slipped again, this time landing hard on her back and head. I helped her up and we continued. There were no serious side effects, although her back was a little sore the next day. We found my parents waiting for us at the entrance to the canyon, and so we sat there drying off. We then all climbed up and sat on the amazingly warm rocks outside the canyon to dry off some more. After a while, once we were determined to be dry enough, we headed back to our car and started driving back to Waterton. Remember how I had mentioned that the car wasn't working earlier? My dad had popped the hood to see what was wrong with the car, and as we drove along the highway back to the town of Waterton, the hood flew up, smacking into the windshield. We all panicked and my dad quickly pulled over to the side of the road. My aunt was terrified and yelled to get out of the car in case it was about to blow up. It didn't blow up. My dad retrieved some thin rope from the trunk and tied the hood down. He couldn't simply close it because the hole smacking against the windshield part had dented it. After it was tied down, we drove down to Waterton, but slower than we had been going previously. Once we got to Waterton, we all got out of the car and watched as my dad fidgeted with the hood some more. A family that was walking by asked us what was wrong, and we told them what had happened. The father took a look at the car and tried to help my dad. They were really very sweet. It was a very exciting trip and we laughed about it quite a bit.